so RAID network, um, I'm going to talk about this uh, off-chain token transfer network. Maybe we start again with why we're doing this. And the reason is, with current state of blockchain technology, there's some problems. Um, we can only do a certain limited number amount of transactions per second um, to reach finality, to be sure that the transaction will update the state. Um, that currently takes 15 seconds per block, but you should wait multiple blocks, so that can add up to one, 100 seconds. And another issue is that all state on the blockchain is readable for everyone. And the throughput issue uh, leads to higher transaction costs because there's like a limited resource of um, transaction or um, a capacity on the blockchain. And the reason for this is global consensus. Global consensus is very expensive because if Alice sends five tokens to Bob, then the world needs to know. And all the nodes need to reach agreement on this fact. And the problem is the latency and bandwidth properties of networks. They, there's latency and the bandwidth is limited and you want to have as many nodes as possible participating in the consensus protocol. So if you switch to a different view on consensus, if it would only be between Alice and Bob, say Alice would send Bob like a check saying I owe you five tokens. And if you then add some state channel technology which would allow Bob to be secure about the fact that he's able to claim those five tokens on the blockchain, um, then you have a pattern which you can use to solve this problem or to improve the situation. And that's what we base the RAIN token network on. So what we do is basically we have many, or well, we have participants have state channels with each other. Like say every participant has like five or 50 state channels with other participants. And together they form a network. And if two participants want to, which don't have a direct channel, want to transfer tokens, we can find a path in that network to transfer them. And all transactions happen outside of the blockchain for the token transfers. We use the blockchain only to manage deposits and to eventually settle. So that's nothing, nothing you need to do, but you could do. Um, today I want to, won't go into the implementation details. I presented them last year at last year's DEFCON. Um, but let's recap the features. So we can scale out asset transfer capacity. We get good finality properties, like well, one second finality. Uh, we get better transaction um, privacy because only those nodes involved in a transfer uh, learn about the transaction. And we get very, very low fees. And well, the way how we build the system is it's compatible with the ERC-20 token standard. That is, it should be compatible with most dApps that are built currently. Um, that's a bit unfair, but it's like Ethereum compares to the RAID network like an early bike to MacLev. Except for the cost, it's, it's way cheaper than MacLev. Okay, so one concept I need to explain to you because we, we come to that later is uh, what we can do in RAID is we can entangle two transfers. So if Bob and Alice want to exchange tokens, say Alice wants to exchange 10 A tokens for three B tokens with Bob, then they can set up two transfers, one sending the A tokens, one sending the B tokens, and they can lock them together so that either both of them go through or none. So that's atomic, which is a nice property. Um, something else we can do is so-called smart transfers. These are token transfers which can only be settled on a blockchain if a certain condition on the blockchain is true. That could be the, the, the outcome from an oracle or the last price from an um, on-chain exchange. And then you can build more advanced applications based on RAIN like betting or financial derivatives. Okay, so what's the status of the project? We've been working on this since last September. Um, we had a, a long sprint starting in May, I think, and it ended maybe in July. But then we were able 
to do the first transactions on the Raiden, oh, sorry, on the Ethereum testnet. That is, actually, the transactions have been off-chain, but the setup was on, on the Raiden test, on the Ethereum testnet, sorry. And, well, we had a transaction initiated in, in, from a node in Copenhagen going to a node in Florianopolis, and finally the receiver of the tokens were, has been, was based in uh, Mumbai. So that's where our colleagues are, some of them. And well, we got quite good press coverage for that. And um, yeah, we're happy that we could deliver. So basically, Raiden works. Um, because one of the, the better applications of Raiden is probably in the Internet of Things uh, technology. We prepared a demo for that. So here the basic setup is that we have um, a producer and a consumer of electricity. And the producer, he has some meter so he can account for how much uh, energy units were uh, transferred. And there's a Raspberry Pi uh, running a RAID node. And the Raspberry Pi can control a relay to switch off um, the electricity supply. We have the same thing on the consumer side. There's also a meter and a Raspberry Pi with a RAID node on it. And now the producer requires that the consumer send some tokens. And if he does so, um, he will start supplying electricity. And you see the light goes on. And then there's, like here, there's this LED. It blinks. And whenever it blinks, there's one energy unit consumed. And whenever it blinks, we send one token using the RAID network. And so here we can see that there's, on the consumer side, he has only like 19 tokens left. That's all he has on account. And the receiver side, the producer, earns those tokens. And the consumer has also some, some credits. So um, now those tokens are transferred. OK, detailed view here. Uh, whenever this blinks, there should be a, a transaction going on here. So for every impulse the meter gives, we send a transaction. Well, and then at some point in this demo, the consumer ran out of tokens and also the, the tokens that he had on credit with the producer goes to zero in the upper right. And well, then the producer will decide to shut down the uh, electricity supply. And well, you can imagine if, if such a technology or similar is used and widely deployed in IoT, then we will see like millions of transactions in short time frames. And that's something that you can uh, tackle with technology like Raiden, but not so good with uh, blockchains that use global consensus. Uh, we're working with the Swarm guys, and we try to leverage their uh, network transport. And also, we would try to convince them to use uh, Raiden for the micropayments in Swarm and in the Light Client protocol. We thought about how we could integrate Raiden into the Ethereum clients. Most likely candidate is that we would kind of wrap the Raiden API into the JSON RPC API of the Ethereum clients. And there's already some early industry adopters who try to build applications on top of Raiden, expecting that it will actually work. OK, we have a roadmap. Like, the most important part is probably the routing problem, which is still to solve in a way that it's scalable. Currently, we, we, have, we require that we build a view of, of, all the, of all the channels in the system, but it will not scale to a large IoT setup. But otherwise, we hope that we will be able to have a test net of RAID network on, on the Ethereum, on, on, like a beta of the RAID network on the Ethereum mainnet this winter. OK, one more thing I want to talk about is decentralized exchanges. Um, let's look at how decentralized exchanges work on the blockchain currently. Okay. Basically, that's a smart contract which implements an order book and takes token into escrow. So if someone wants to sell tokens, we call okay. it a maker. 
he will send those tokens to the smart contract and the smart contract and, and says which price it sets for those tokens and the smart contract will take the tokens into a scroll and list the tokens in the order book. And if someone likes the offer, we call it a taker, he will pick that offer and send the requested tokens to the smart contract, the transaction, and then the smart contract will give the transaction to both parties as uh, they expected it. That's, that works, that's good. But the problems here are, again, throughput, we can only do so and so much transactions per second. Um, finality, like you don't want to wait 100 seconds to be sure that your trade went through. And transaction cost is rather high. So how could we build that on Raiden? And the easiest approach would be just to broadcast your offer to a group of uh, interested traders or parties who want to exchange tokens. And then one could decide to be uh, one who picks that offer and a take and make a good engage in this uh, atomic swap, which I showed earlier. They could just swap the tokens off-chain securely. Um, but the problem is, basically, if uh, one party, no, so the setups, if, you, if two parties want to set up an agreement, the one who signs it first or commits to it first um, offers the other party a free option because the other party can decide whether it also wants to join the agreement or just waits. Maybe the price moves into his favor. And then he can still later decide to take that option or not. Um, you have this problem if there's long timeouts, if there's a, a longer period where this situation can uh, exist. And so if you had that for a decentralized off-chain exchange, we would, that would not work. So it would be exploited and that would not be a workable, workable market probably. So uh, the solution could be that you work with a third party. Basically, the free option from them is only solvable with a third party. Um, so that third party would, co well, it would offer to take commitment deposits from both parties and notify both parties if both parties are um, committed to do that off-chain token swap. And if they fail to later prove that they actually executed the token swap, he would keep or burn those deposits. Otherwise, he sends them back. And if we have the incentive set up like this, um, it could work and how it actually, the, the flow of, of actions would be something like the, the offerer of the tokens, the maker, deposits with the third party, then broadcasts the offer, which has a reference to that deposit with the third party. Um, then someone who is willing to <coughs> exchange the tokens also needs to deposit, and if he does, the maker gets the notification then they both uh, do the token swap, and if it goes through, both confirm to the third party that it worked, and then the third party can release uh, those deposits again. And the properties we get here is that it's off-chain. No, none of these transactions goes to the blockchain, uh, so we get high throughput, low latency, low fees, basically the rain properties. And um, while that looks complicated, I think we can abstract it in a way that the API and the user experience is similar to traditional exchanges. Um, one more thing to note is there's limited trust required to the third party because it could run away with the deposits, but this, with, the, yeah, with the commitment deposits, but they're very small compared to the tokens they want to exchange. It does not take the tokens, it takes different deposits. And if it makes a business model out of this, then always the, the business would be at stake, so that probably will not will not happen. Okay, one more thing. What, um, actually, we plan to, to move Raiden to become a generalized infrastructure to run um, off-chain applications. And the infrastructure might be easier than actually giving developers good tools to develop um, off-chain applications. So therefore, we also plan to provide a framework which makes it easy, or at least easier, to build this kind of applications. And we just last week met with some nice other people from the ecosystem, and we think about joining forces 
uh, to work on that. So to summarize what, what you should take away from the talk is um, RAID Network works and will be available soon. Uh, we aim to go beyond uh, sold token transfers. Um, I believe that the Ethereum killer apps will somehow be based on RAID or similar technology because if they're killer apps, they need to scale somehow and should have a good user experience that is low latency is also important here. And I also think that if you want to see um, broad industry adoption of distributed ledger technology, then we need something like the RAID network or similar. Because, again, the properties of scalability and uh, especially here, transaction privacy are important. Okay, if you want to learn more about our project, then here's some URLs. And otherwise, I'm done. Thank you.